Hello my friends, let's talk Nier Automata, the game that people are finally starting to talk about because a good number of people are finally finishing their playthroughs of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The original Nier was one of my two favorite games of the last generation, and I can't help but feel justified in my philosophical evaluations of games when this impossible sequel literally bleeds philosophy at every moment. But Nier's version of narrative is a weird mix of crushing depression and hopeful levity. Automata offers us the hope that was promised at the end of the original Nier's philosophical lesson. So when we're done here, I suggest you click the link to my short series on the philosophy of the original Nier at the end. But without more delay, let's get into Automata, which has a very simple and foundational message. The unexamined life is not worth living. First, in Nier Automata, not having meaning is often equated to not having life or a right to it. This is first alluded to early on with 9S's often repeated line, there's no meaning in anything machines do. That line being the excuse given to Yorha members to justify ignoring pacifist, intellectual, or human-like behaviors and communication that they see in machines. Regardless of their being, without meaning, their lives don't have value, and thus killing machines is permissible for Yorha and other Android Resistance members. Second, lost connections are met with the inability to cope or handle loss in the Yorha command structure. Having emotions or feelings is not allowed because they are inefficient towards mission success. The various androids are obviously completely inept at suppressing emotions, and for a time 2B seemed to be the only one accomplishing this stoicism. But multiple side quests and main quests show a complete and perpetual collapse in both emotion and a sense of purpose when an android or machine loses a loved one. In A2's case, it was the loss of her original squad, and Anemone's squad, that caused her to vow to kill all machines until they kill her. A2 couldn't bring herself to actually kill herself once she lost everyone, but her rage and her lack of purpose meant she could only rely on the thing she was made for, which was killing machines. 9S, particularly in losing 2B to A2, well, that sentence almost doesn't sound correct. 9S lost 2B when 2B asked Unit A2 to kill her, so as to prevent the spread of the logic virus that had infected her. And as a result, 9S comes up with the same conclusion that A2 did originally, that his only purpose was to kill all machines and A2, and to continue doing so until he was eventually destroyed. Eve, when he loses Adam, ended up viewing his own life as meaningless and sought death because his life was poorly examined in a bubble without input from others. Eve's purpose in life was his love for Adam, and once Adam was dead, lost all meaning when Adam planned his own death at the hand of 2B. While Adam himself was an outlier to this sort of trajectory being experienced by so many other characters because he had an internal purpose of learning about humanity, his progenitors, from reading the Old Testament. But without critical guidance, Adam formed a skewed perspective of a virtue of wrath and hatred from the interaction between humans and gods. And also, there are many androids in side quests who go crazy after losing a loved one. They don't have any means to examine that loss, and thus can't build emotional intelligence that would help them manage that situation in a healthy way. Third, whenever characters have a chance to examine meaning, they are dismissive of the notion of thinking about such concerns at all. The first and most prominent example of this is the very first side quest that we do for the supply store owner, who sends you on a quest to get the parts needed to repair his leg, only to reveal that he intends to use it for other androids' repairs, and not repairing himself. He expresses a concern that is consistent with the thought experiment called the Ship of Theseus, as well as his fear of losing his identity should he actually end up replacing every part that made up his original body. This concern, however, is outright ignored by 2B and 9S, who routinely back up their consciousness and switch bodies on a daily basis, thus setting a tone of treating anyone attempting to examine their own condition or the state of the world as being weird or abnormal. Fourth, all bosses and many significant NPCs are directly named after philosophers, from Simone de Beauvoir, to Hegel, to Kierkegaard, to Jean-Paul Sartre, and Ernest Bloch, and even Chinese philosophers like Roche and Koshi 
all famous historical figures that engaged in the dialectic and the pursuit of wisdom through a loving dialogue between friends. Through the act of killing or erasing these characters, we symbolically destroy the ones who are attempting to find meaning and give sources of meaning to their various communities. The machine Pascal gave the virtue of faith and peace to his village. Ernest gave the virtue of independence and hope to the forest kingdom. And Kierkegaard also gave the ideas of faith as well as companionship to the robots living in the abandoned factory. Particularly, most of these philosophers are existentialists, a group of last century's modern philosophy that directly focused on the meaninglessness of reality. They state that existence and being precedes essence or purpose, which was considered the common wisdom of the time, and that the examined life was the function of creating your own meaning and becoming authentically a whole person. Killing those philosophers who found rational ways to overcome meaninglessness also symbolically dooms our characters to lose themselves and any sense of purpose. There is an endgame event that really embodies overcoming this, but I want to try and avoid those major event spoilers the best I can. Finally, a single small trite game mechanic was put into the game to constantly tell the player that they are in dialogue with these philosophies. Camus, an existentialist who doesn't get much play in this game, is famously quoted for saying, the only philosophical question that matters is whether or not to kill yourself. And from moment one of the game, this option is available to you. Just go into your plugin chips, remove your operating system software, and voila. Nier Automata allows you to commit suicide at any point if the meaningless of life becomes too much. Nier Automata, however, as a game to be played, challenges its players to push back and thus forge their own meaning by playing the game to its end, to move past all the unsatisfying endings until we reach the true end. Nier Automata is a game that challenges you to find meaning in the meaningless. It reflects that aspect of life better than any game before it, but that meaning has to be your own, and the attempt to find meaning ends up being far more important. To embrace ambiguity, and to continue the search, because the unexamined life is not worth living. Thank you for watching everyone. Now the attentive viewer will notice that the title of the video says the philosophy of Nier Automata Alpha. That can only mean one thing. The philosophy of Nier Automata Beta is just around the corner. Yes, the themes of this game are deep enough to thoroughly cover many different philosophies, so I'll give you a hint about the episode on the screen. H.E. Let's play a little game. If you can correctly guess the idea or topic of the next video on Nier Automata using that hint, I'll include your name at the end of the philosophy of Nier Automata Beta next week. So put your answers in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to find out if you guessed correctly. Thank you for watching, and stay true.